What's up? Welcome back to Ground Zero Salem. This is Pat. Um, been a little bit. Had a busy week. Had a week off, um, most of which was uh, spent on pulling up my carpet in my living room and painting half my house, which has been kind of a nice vacation, actually. A lot of, a lot of ugly shit in this house that needed fixing, so I'm glad we got a chance to take care of that. Also went to Armageddon, sold a bunch of stuff, bought a bunch of stuff. All that will be discussed. Maybe not all of it. What I feel like talking about from that haul will be discussed in the updates to come. Um, right now, what I'd like to talk about this update is Swedish death metal. Um, I don't really consider myself any sort of an authority on anything. I just know what I like, um, and I do like Swedish death metal quite a bit. Um, ever since I read the Swedish death metal book by Daniel Eckeroth, which is highly recommended, it kind of opened up more and more stuff to check out. Uh, I've been aware of a lot of the more second and third run, second and third tier bands for a while, but it, it fleshed out a lot for me. I got it when it came out years ago. Um, a friend of mine on Facebook was talking about it. What's up, Daryl? Uh, I think I commented, you know, great read or whatever, and he's like, you should do an update on Swedish death metal. And, um, I don't often feel comfortable, like, approaching anything like, oh, this is my buyer's guide to whatever, um, just because I just know what I know, you know. Um, but it just so happens that over the past two months or so, I've just bought a lot of this stuff as it happens, because I like it. And I figured, why not take a chunk out of my recent purchases and my listening pile and uh, talk about it because a lot of this stuff is kind of veers off, veers off the left hand path, if you, so to speak, from the traditional Swedish sound. All of it was happening in the 90s when all that stuff was blowing up. It's cool to hear how, you know, in this Northern European um, democratic socialist country, all these, <laughs> all these bands kind of sprouted up like poison fungi due to, you know, government subsidized community centers and practice spaces. You had this very, very rich scene, and uh, there's it just seems like the well is endless, you know? So I keep discovering all this stuff. Most of the stuff in this pile I've been aware of, but these are purchases that I made recently that I've just been kind of diving into and familiarizing myself with further. So, with that being said, here's a classic that we're spinning in the background. This is Unleashed. It's a bootleg demo compilation. I used to have all, most of the songs from this, I think, on a double LP another boot that I flipped years ago and regret. Um, it is nice to have all this stuff on a CD though, I feel. All the flipping over of double LPs and stuff, I just throw it on and, you know, spin it just for the the format. I think a CD works better. Anyway, so we have uh, three demos, Utter Dark, Revenge, and Dark One, and then some, well, the Dark One's a promo, whatever. Um, then we have some live songs from the Revenge Tour. I like this stuff a lot. Um, I still prefer the first album to the versions that are on this. There's a bunch of songs that are repeated. I think uh, the song Unleashed, Where Life Ends, A Dark One, a couple others. I, I like Where No Life Dwells more than, and I, you know, sometimes I am a demos better guy, kind of guy. Sometimes I'm not. In this case, I'm not. It feels like they have more of a plunging, slow kind of autopsy thing going on. Um, but it's actually been a while since I've visited, revisited Unleashed, so maybe I need to do that and compare notes. At any rate, that's playing in the background. Picked this up on eBay recently. It was cheap. Um, first off, I'm going to talk about Wombath. This was re-released by Pulverized, uh, 2013 it looks like. I picked it up from Nuclear War Now a couple of months ago. This is a CD compiling features internal caustic torments the full length which i think came out on black mark i'll have to correct that if i don't remember um we, i'll have to correct that because i don't remember we got the lp you got the brutal mites demo brutal mites don't know what that means uh the several shapes ep which i also own on seven inch and uh a, a new song from 2013 i have a recent split seven inch of theirs that I still need to spin, uh, that I bought off my friend Darren, who's destroying some European stuff. What's up, Darren? So I got to get on that. But uh, at any rate, all that bullshit aside, 
This is a, a great record that doesn't sound like a Swedish death metal record. To me, to my ears, it has far more in common with some British bands and some American bands. Specifically, Bolt Thrower, Benediction, uh, maybe a bit of like Baphomet from Buffalo, or even early Cannibal Corpse a little bit. Um, way more of a mid-paced affair than a lot of uh, Swedish stuff. It's got that kind of mid-paced pummeling, Gatling gun, double bass thing going on. Very uh, Carl Willett slash early Barney Greenway style uh, roaring. The over the ringing out chords and crunchy riffs and everything. Uh, I love it. It's a really good record. I like it better than anything by Benediction that I've heard, even though I like them fine. Just nothing I've heard really grabs me that much. Um, so it's it's definitely got that more of that flavor to it, and I think it's great. I, from what I remember, the uh, the EP and the demo have a little bit more of that kind of HM2 thing going on, but it's been a while since I've listened to my old 7-inch. Um, but it's definitely a great package, worth picking up for whatever this is, you know, 10 bucks. So that's great. And then we got Vomitory. Vomitory, I've heard of for years. I have a 7-inch of theirs that I, I picked up randomly that I loved, and I remember seeing that they were a Swedish band from the 90s. I think the 7-inch is from 94, around that time. First thing I did, and I threw it on, and it was way more of a bassy almost brutal with two O's early version of that style kind of you know almost American not as technical as suffocation but along those kind of lines you know that kind of death metal and not you know the trim picked all over the place punk beat HM2 kind of thing and uh, I remember being like this is cool I'll have to revisit this and um I, I just came across this on Discogs. I was buying a bunch of other records. I was going after a prong record on Discogs and saw this. I was like, you know what? It's a couple of bucks. I think they talked about it on the Death Metal Dicks or Death Metal Dads, rather, podcast a lot. Talk about how much they like Vomitory. I was like, oh, those guys know what they're talking about, so I'll I'll buy Revelation Nausea for whatever it was, eight or nine bucks. First uh, Metal Blade release they did, they had two albums before that which we have here on a remasters double CD raped in their own blood and redemption haven't even spun this yet so I'm not going to talk about it but I want to hold it up first two and uh, like I was saying this is far more busy um, blast laden brutal death metal guttural uh, but there's still a Swedish kind of air to it um, there's more almost sort of punk riffing in laced throughout all the madness, you know, like a few more simplistic three and four chord up and down the neck kind of riffs, you know, uh, vaguely reminiscent of Discharge and I'm sure plenty of their countrymen like Anti-Symax and stuff like that, but just, you know, if you muffle your ears a little bit, you might be able to think it's disappear for a few seconds before they go back to blasting sort of thing. Um, but it's fucking great. Great music, um, very, very, very catchy, very fucking fun listen. And this is a band that has, you know, I don't know how many records they put out on Metal Blade. I, I think they called it a day five years ago or sometime in the 2000, 2010s. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people are huge fans of theirs, but I'm just getting into them now. Other than that seven inch that I've had for a couple of years. So that's fucking great. And now to get into a CD that will test my capacity to, or my ability rather, to describe music, because it's really hard to put into words how fucking brilliant this is. Uh, ben Smasher, what's up, Ben? Pick this up for me. Um, Half Price Books, out in Iowa where he lives, like just got a treasure trove of death metal classics in. Um, they weren't cheap. Um, but I, I shelled out for this. I think Ben already had a copy of it. And I loved Salt, I loved Salt Road Dies, which is this one. I loved um, For Never Laid to Rest, the first one, which is a total, like, penned by Swedish hands love letter to fucking More Sound Studios, particularly the satanic stuff coming out of More Sound in the early 90s. I don't know if that was deliberate. It's probably just what they were listening to. I don't know if the guys in the band made a conscious effort to go, let's sound American. Let's uh, 
let's sound like Deicide. Let's sound like Morbid Angel. Let's sound like Brutality. You know, it's that technical but not too technical fucking scythe sharp, um, catchy, riffy, couple of notches away from thrash into death metal, satanic death metal stuff. This takes all that and makes it fucking weird. Um, like, you know, almost like they've been li listening to some Voivod and Prong and translating it through in a different way. The recording quality, the, re the recording, um, the recording approach to it is almost like some weird mid-90s shit, like Nail Bomb or, or Fear, Emptiness, Despair by Napalm Death. Just in the way it's how dry it is, how affront it is, how there's not a touch of reverb on anything. The bass is as loud as the guitar, clangy and metallic. Again, not the genre, but sounds like metal on metal kind of thing. Um, occasionally they do slow down, they do get kind of like rhythmic and mechanical. Well, it's all rhythmic, there's a drummer. <laughs> um, but they get more kind of mechanical sounding and, dare I say, slightly sort of industrial. Uh, there's a song or two that have like some weird layered in noise, like whispering going on. It's a fucking trip. There's some wild neighing horse fucking, uh, sort of Slayer Hanneman style solos on it. Um, great fast thrash drumming and occasional blasting. It's just great. Uh, salt rubbed eyes, man. So good. Uh, next up we've got Alter, Dark Domains. Compilation, including the split with Cartilage, Finnish Band. Um, got a demo on here. Got several demos, actually. Split with uh, Cartilage, 93 demo, 94 demo, 91 demo. A couple of unreleased tracks from the same year as the split with Cartilage. This was remastered by Dan Suano. Um, ah, design layout by Justin Stubbs. Nice work. Looks great. Um, you know, it, it's, it sounds Swedish. You know, this isn't like a complete divergence like the aforementioned. Uh, but there's a little bit more, I'd say, thrash to it. You know, the tonality is a little bit more towards other types of death metal. There's a, a little, a lot more of the twin guitar slayer kind of thing again. Um, not so much the whinnying, frenzy guitar soloing like the last band, but more like that twin guitar evil. One guitar, one step up from another kind of thing. Hello Waits, think, think Hello Waits kind of stuff. Um, vocals are a little bit deeper than most Swedish bands too. Fucking great. The stuff on the, on the split, off the split being the best and, uh, I know a lot of people prefer the cartilage side. I like, really like these songs. The only weak spot, the 91 demo, not bad, but pretty generic and, and pretty kind of dry sounding. Um, not horribly produced, but meh. They get more kind of mellow death, uh, for lack of a better term. Layer a lot more melodies, start to involve a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, melodic influences on that one. Um, got a little bit more Gothenburg, so I was trying to think of. Um, but it's it's fucking awesome. The last vocalist they had before they called it a day was Miesco from. If I'm saying that right, sorry. Um, from Nazem and Genocide SS who we lost to the tsunami in Southeast Asia, sadly. So, and he does a great job on this. When they pick up the melodic stuff, I, I, I've read different reviews and different people espousing their opinions about it, saying that they didn't really care for the demos after the split, and I, I think they're brilliant. Um, I've been digging more and more of that stuff, that more melodic Black Death Swedish stuff lately, so, you know, maybe that's why. Being that I've been really appreciating the kind of melodic, Swedish, Black Death kind of stuff a lot more along the lines of Dissection, Sacramentum, Unanimated, still yet to dig into her Eucharist, need to do that, but all that kind of stuff, Those of Unlight by Marduk, uh, I really have just fallen in love with that sound um, recently. Um, so I knew sooner or later I was going to check out Sentinex. This is a reissue, remaster, partial recording of their first album entitled Subconscious Lobotomy. And it is fucking rad. Um, there are touches of where they were going with the more intense melodic stuff. Uh, there's also, on the other end of things, a way more brutal side. 
Um, there's some moody elements with acoustics and uh, piano and, and shit like that. Uh, they, they definitely are listening to some early Peaceville shit here. If you get what I'm saying. Um, and then the last tracks on this are... They definitely... Uh, on this early stuff, the first record, I mean, they have a distinct, like, HM2 pedal turned all the way, the, the typical Swedish thing. Um, but that's gone already by the EP that's after this that's included on here, which I don't have the title in front of me right now, but it's like the last three songs. You could tell already they're going, starting to go in a different direction. Um, I'm curious to hear that second album. I have it ordered. It's on route to my house right now. But I bought this right around the same time as their, I believe, fifth album, Hell Brigade. And this is that harsh... Mm, harsh isn't really the word. Harsh in a sense, I guess, in terms of, like, speed and intensity. Um, but that, you know, full throttle, incredibly triumphant, melodic, evil, Swedish Black Death stuff. Uh, and it's, it's great. It's really, really good. I don't... Maybe I'm just not paying attention. That's very likely. But I don't really hear these guys mention the same breath as Dissection, Sacramentum, etc. Um... I don't feel like they're talked about a lot, and they have a shit ton of albums out. Who knows? Um, but this record's awesome. I mean, already with the second song, you've got, like, these great, clean, melodic sort of Viking vocals kicking in, and that's awesome. And uh, the ov the whole thing overall is just extremely well executed, uh, memorable, very, very good, great harmonies, uh, just raging fast. It's got some bonus tracks on it as well. This is real cheap. You know, this is a band whose discography I'm probably going to explore extensively. Along with Vomitory. Um, Sentinex, it came out on World War III music. This was re-released. This was thrown around. This was re-released by Pulverized as well. So, yeah, Pulverized. What's up, guys? Good, good work reissuing all this stuff. Looks like they did the altar, too. Yeah, they did the altar, too. So, hey. Pulverized Records. Good stuff. Good shit. Um, yeah. I don't know. Hadn't made a video for a while. Uh, I've been thinking about this stuff all week. I've been obsessing over these bands, listening to them. Really, uh, really into it. Love it. And I have a shit ton more stuff to talk about, which will happen in the weeks to come. But until then, keep your eyes peeled. Um... Watch Hereditary. It's pretty good until the end, which I thought was kind of whack. That's my opinion. Have a good one. Enjoy October.